hello it's Toby. so you can be asked to write an essay on your relation and you need to be able to explain that so you start by saying that the notochord induces the overlying ectoderm to form a neural plate so you have a flat plate then what happens this plate develops a groove okay and the sides will elevate to form neural folds so the sides will have neural folds and the center you have neural groove and the folds now come together and join and the place where they join some cells will be released in form of neural crest cells okay so neural plate notochord induces overlying ectoderm to form a neural plate the neural plate develops a um, groove okay and then the sides elevate to form neural folds neural folds then come together and then they join and the place where they join some cells are released when the neural folds join the resultant is the neural tube that has formed but this neural crest they still form some cells in the body what are the derivatives of the neural crest you have the connective tissue and bones in the face and the skull region we have the ganglia of cranial nerves the c cells so parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland that produce calcitonin you have the conotrunkal septum in the heart this separates the pulmonary trunk from the aortic trunk then you have the odontoblasts in the teeth the dummies in the face and neck the dorsal root ganglia of the spinal cord the sympathetic chain and the pre-aortic ganglia parasympathetic ganglia found in the gastrointestinal tract adrenal medulla specifically the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla that produce adrenaline and noradrenaline you have the schwann cells that cause myelination in the pns the glial cells arachnoid and pia mater which are the leptomeninges and melanocytes responsible for um, skin color so all the derivatives of the neural crest cells now the neural folds will fuse and form a neural tube so we have one cylindrical tube and you need to know that the superior two-thirds of this tube will form the brain and the spinal cord sorry the superior two-thirds will form the brain and the inferior third will form the spinal cord so at the superior end or cephalic end and the caudal end we have neural pores openings remember this tube will close up as a zip from the center and then it close upwards and downwards so but then the cranial pore tends to close earlier than the caudal pore so it closes at day 25 and this one closes two days later at day 27 the posterior or caudal pore closes on day 27 the cranial pore closes on day 25 okay so neural folds come together and this uh, coming together begins at the center and then continues craniocordally but it's completed at the cranial portion earlier on day 25 so the cranial neural pore closes at day 25 and the caudal closes two days later at day 27. so the superior two-thirds of the neural tube forms the brain the inferior third forms the spinal cord now we have what you call an encephaly an encephaly is a condition where there is defective or um, lack of closure of the cranial neural pore so that means the brain will not form because you need the cranial portion of the neural tube to close the cranial two thirds to form the brain but now the brain will not form and when the content does not form the container will not form therefore the skull in this uh, babies don't form and an encephaly is not compatible with life so these babies as soon as they are born they just die you can have um, unclosed uh, posterior neural pore can also occur so basically that's the neurulation then lastly after embryonic period now we have the fetal period remember embryonic period is from week eight fetal period now starts at the third month until birth and generally just characterized by rapid growth of body and um, tissue maturation so basically that's why you need to understand this process so embryonic period is very critical because really that is where conventional malformations can easily occur. Thank you.